Uh, what's your general outlook here for, I guess, where we go next year with regards to equity markets? I think the bias is still upside now. Uh, what worries me is down the line, and I'm worried if we get bad inflation data, uh, October, November, December, uh, I think uh, Chairman Powell put us on notice. He said we would, uh, not only are we going to start the taper, he's pretty sure of that, but he actually really strongly implied that he would have to accelerate uh, the taper. Now, that wasn't, uh, you know, the the the, the modem, modal uh, expectation, but it was definitely implied. So, if the data does come in strong on inflation, and I think it will, I don't think the market down the line at, toward the end of the year is prepared for an acceleration. So, I think we could have clear sailing for a while, but some trouble down the road. Are the bond markets telling you that they are indeed preparing for some of that higher inflation? We're at 146 on the 10 year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and even I was surprised that it broke out of that 115 to 135 range pretty decisively. Now, all of us, I think, and almost all economists thought it would even be higher by now. Remember, it, it hit 175 early, earlier this year. but. Um, you know, again, it's really the inflation, ongoing inflation data, which I think was greatly understated in that last monthly report gave some false confidence. I think it's going to come in on the aggressive side and, and, and that might push the Fed to be more aggressive at, at the tightening. Well, Professor, maybe you could telegraph over the next couple of months what you're concerned about when it comes to inflation and the indicators that investors should be looking for. Well, particularly, we, we know that the housing in, in inflation, because of the way the Bureau of Labor Statistics gathers the data, is way understated. They're saying 2 to 3% year over year. Well, we know medium home prices are up 20%. Rentals are up 15%. It just takes a while for that to get into the data. Now, very honestly, I don't think it was credible uh, when we got the uh, survey of economic projections that the Fed thinks inflation is going to be 4.2% this year and 2.2% and next year. I think it's going to be much higher, and, and that's, going, that's what's going to push the Fed. In the meantime, you know, cash and fixed income and bonds are not the place to be in an inflationary environment. Yeah. So even though those yields have moved up, you know, people are saying, hey, where am I going to go? I'd rather go to stocks. I'd rather go to real assets. I'd rather go to real estates. I'd rather go to REITs. So that's really what's happening. Stock market's acting pretty well, but yeah. the bond market is taking notice. I, I am curious. Do you think we ever get to a point in the relatively near future uh, where we actually start to maybe see bonds be a little bit more attractive, cash be a little bit more attractive, or is the environment that we've gotten so used to now over the last couple of decades, is that really just going to be the norm for the foreseeable future? It's going to be closer to the norms. What, what has basically happened is that the long bond has become the hedge asset of choice. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Well, we, we saw on, on Monday when the Dow is down 1,000, treasuries were up three points. And a lot of people like that hedge, and they're willing to hold those those bonds. Um, it's like an insurance policy. You don't, you know, expect to make money on it, yeah. but in the very short run, it gives you some cushion. And that has been a huge source of demand. Mm. I don't think that's disappearing. Um, and it's going to keep yields much lower than they were when, you know, when I was a younger uh, professor out there.